Thank you for listening to entity number B333's mission log 3. This log includes inappropriate language, derealization, and loss of free will. Enjoy! Entity number B333 reporting, Mission Log 3. I am currently having an argument with Entity G005, also known as Goose. Really? You're talking to your audio device right now? I'm in the middle of making a point. Yeah, well, your point was stupid, but I thought of a really funny joke and I wanted the creative to hear it. I don't think the creative cares about jokes. Okay, fine. (gasps) I know someone who will. Hey, guide! Yes, Entity number B333. What did one portal say to the other portal? Nothing. Portals do not speak. B, listen. This paperwork is for you. It was wrongly addressed to me, probably because I was originally supposed to be assigned to the Moirai Project, not you. Here you go. You're welcome. Oh, right. Must have been a slap to the face to read about me absolutely crushing the mission you were supposed to be on, huh? No, actually, it was quite entertaining. Talking to life forms, revealing your identity, the name Tumbleweed. I knew your performance would be subpar, but this is ridiculous. Can you two keep it down? I can hear you down the hall. Oh, Dean, I have a joke for you. What did one portal- We don't have time for that. You need to get to your next reality shift. You're supposed to be leaving now. Shit, I completely lost track of time. I just want to make it clear to the creative that this is all Goose's fault. All right, I'm ready to go. How childish are you? Before you go, I just wanted to remind you, this is specifically a maintenance mission. I don't know exactly what you're fixing within the reality, but the guide can help you identify. Got it. You've got six hours. Good luck. Get going. You'll be back before you know it. Entity number B333, I would like to know the joke. Eh, don't worry about it. Okay, well, here we go. For your next reality, the creative has selected reality number 3000, The Frank and Francis Show, airing 5 to 5.30 p.m. Central on weeknights. This reality is currently undergoing moderate reality corruption. Proceed with caution. Huh. Okay, that's interesting. Instead of the portal dropping me off in the middle of nowhere, it appears that it's dropped me inside of a lifeform's house. Seems like the portal's somehow connected to the front door. Interior of the home looks... nice. Everything is well furnished and clean. Lots of bright colors. Watching for lifeforms, stand by. <laughs> huh? What was that? Oh, by golly, what just happened? What in the world just came out of my mouth? Ha <laughs> ha, gotcha. Wait, you're not Susie. Golly, a life form. Why do I keep saying golly? I- I'm trying to say golly. Golly, gosh darn, what in the heavens? Careful. Mama and Papa will put a bar of soap in your mouth if you keep talking like that. What are you talking about? Uh, okay, I-, I should probably do a life form profile. Young bipedal humanoid looks to be about five feet tall. They're wearing a colorful hat with a propeller on it. It doesn't seem functional. What's that little device you're talking to? Is that so you can talk to the USSR? <gasps> Are you a commie? My dad hates commies. A what? Haha, <laughs> 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 caught you, Susie. You're trying to sneak home late. Where is that noise coming from? Okay, whatever. There's a new life form. Another young bipedal humanoid looks to be about 5'6 with long brown hair and freckles. She's wearing a long skirt. Does it have a poodle on it? Ugh! Johnny, you little scamp! You're gonna blow my cover! Mom can't know I was staying out late hanging with Brad. Great! Another life form. She looks about 5'7, medium length brown hair. She's wearing a nightgown and curlers in her hair. What's going on down here? Susan, were you hanging out with that brat again, that no-good beatnik? He's not a no-good beatnik, Mom. He's an artist, and we're in love. You're in love? Good heavens, what has gotten into your head? 
Frank, can you believe this? Frank? Another life form? Oh, gosh, this is getting complicated. Wait, where, where is he? Who are you all staring at? What, what's that music? Hello? Classic, Classic Frank! Frank. <laughs> where are you going? Who's Frank? Wait, are those birds? It's the middle of the night! This wasn't in my fatherhood handbook! Everybody, hurry, get up! We need to get an early start today. W when did you all get dressed? I is it daytime again? <sighs> but Mom, it's a Saturday. I don't understand why we need to get up so early. Saturday is a family day. It's as I always say, family comes first. Isn't that right, Frank? <laughs> Classic, Classic Frank. Frank! Something seriously wrong is going on. I mean, where the devil is this Frank person? Uh, guide, what am I supposed to be doing maintenance on? I don't see any ominous pyramids this time. Scanning. We are near the location of the reality corruption but you will need to get closer to perform an evaluation. <sighs> Great. I need to get out of this house and get to somewhere I can take a look around. What? Th the door's locked, but I just came through it. And why is it locked from the outside? Oh no, it's Deborah from next door. I wonder what she could want. That woman only ever causes trouble. You're just saying that because she beat you at last year's annual Nicefield casserole cook-off. Don't remind me. Let's see what she wants. Oh, uh, don't try the door. It must be stuck or something. How did you- Hello, Francis. Deborah. Another one. Bipedal humanoid looks to be about 5'8 with short blonde hair. She's wearing a blue polka dot dress. Stylish. How nice of you to drop by. What do you want? I couldn't help but notice. Last night, your daughter was skulking around on the corner with that troublesome boy, Brad. He's not troublesome! Hush, Susan! Deborah, I am well aware of the situation, and I have it all under control. I know you're doing your best, Francis. But your husband, Frank, has done nothing to help keep your family in line. It would be a shame if the social committee found out about your daughter's unsavory activities. <gasps> You wouldn't dare! What does your husband do all day anyways? He spends all his time in that man cave of his. One woman can't do it all. And yet you do. Nurse, head of the social committee, fashion icon, book club president, but not a wife. Oh, even if I'm not a wife, I've proven myself to be more of a homemaker than you. Or did you forget who won last year's casserole cook-off? That baked CD was a work of art. But that competition was a complete sham anyways. What? Are you trying to say you could make a better casserole than me? Well, I... Yeah, she totally could. Mom's casserole is the best. She could beat you any day. Well, really now? Sweet little Johnny here has so much confidence in you, Francis. How about we put that confidence to the test? Let's see who can make a better casserole by tonight. If you win... I won't tell the social committee about your daughter's little escapades. If I win, you never show your face at a casserole cook-off again. <gasps> well, I'll see you tonight. Some nerve that woman has. Can you believe this, Frank? Thanks, dear. You always know how to make me feel better. Why can't they tell that Frank is missing? And what's a casserole? Johnny, you shouldn't have just gone and challenged Deborah like that. She's a very capable woman. Yeah, Johnny. You shouldn't have done that. Not so fast, young lady. You're the reason we're in this mess in the first place. I can't whip up an incredible casserole with this sort of a notice without your help. Looks like we have no choice but to spend the day making the best casserole that Nicefield has ever seen. Okay, that sounds painfully mundane. But with the potential for wacky hijinks. If, anyways, I should probably try to find this Frank person. Wait. Why has everyone stopped moving? Why is there music playing? Hi there. Ah! 
Where did you come from? My name is Randall Howard Cash the Third, and I'm Jan. And we're here to change your life. By golly, they, they they look like salespeople. Seems like they appeared out of thin air with some weird machine. Have you ever found yourself tired of doing the dishes, bored with the laundry, exhausted by cooking? Have I? You have. Well, do we have the product for you? Introducing the Multipurpose Turbo Home Apparatus 3000. Wow, we! They're not even looking at me. They're just staring at the wall. With the help of this device, you'll be able to finish all of your housework in a pinch. I can't even believe how much easier my life has become since I've bought the Multipurpose Turbo Home Apparatus 3000. I'm starting to think that my husband loves it more than he loves me. Who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> what does that even mean? And, and how does the machine work? Hello? With the help of science and technology, this machine will work miracles for your household. So, so order, order now. now. How? Who are you? Where did you people come from? What? They disappeared. Oh boy, everyone's moving again. Well, Mom, what do you want us to do first? Did nobody else see that? Uh, okay, everyone's just ignoring me again. <sighs> okay, let's see if I can get to one of the other rooms. Dang it! Maybe I could just bust it in somehow? Okay, that was uncalled for. Once you're ready, meet me in the kitchen. Maybe while they're gone, I can look for Frank and- Whoa! Goodness gracious! I- I'm in a completely different room! The whole family's here too, how? Alright, let's get started on this casserole. Oh no! Where's all the food in the pantry? Oh, about that. When I had my friends over for a party, we kinda ate them all. <laughs> oh dear. Wait! Where's my casserole dish? Well... Dad and I used it to build a radio to intercept communications from the USSR. What am I ever going to do with you two? Frank, can you at least do anything to help? Wait, Frank, you can't just go down to your man cave. I need your help. The man cave? Maybe that could give me more clues to where Frank is and where I'm supposed to do maintenance. I don't know how we're going to even begin to make a casserole without the ingredients or the dish. Hello, Francis? The door was unlocked, so I let myself in. Deborah, What are you doing here? Oh, I just wanted to see you. I mean, see how the recipe was coming. Uh, the recipe's going very well. Huh. I can see your two children have decided to help you out. But where's Frank? He's down in his man cave. You know, Dad... Even though he's a brave, commie-hating, all-American man, there's one thing even he's scared of. Housework. I'm starting to think you need another woman around the house. You really came all the way over here just to insult me? Maybe I wasn't insulting you. Maybe I was offering. Is, is she implying what I think she's implying? You really came all the way over here just to insult me? I... They're booing her. Did she do something wrong? You really came all the way over here just to insult me? No, to insult you, just to remind you that the clock is ticking. Ta-ta! Guy, did, did you catch all that? It appears that the life forms are having some issues staying in line with the reality. Yeah. Uh, listen, is there some way you can think of to get me into the man cave? It looks like it's our best bet. I think it's in the basement? It seems as though only the life forms connected to this reality are able to open and close the doors or control where the life forms move. Perhaps you could convince one to open a door for you? But they're barely even listening to me. We're running out of time! Hmm. I must have some ingredients lying around this house. Ingredients? Ingredients! Guide, could you tell me what kind of things you put in a casserole? Casserole. A typically baked food with three main components. Pieces of meat, such as chicken, or ground meat, or fish, such as tuna, or other protein, such as beans, or tofu, various chopped vegetables. Vegetables! Perfect! Uh, hey, Francis! Uh, I think there's some green beans downstairs in the, uh, fallout shelter. I could go get those for you uh, to help you with your casserole. Swell! Here, let me open the door for you. Nice! Let's head down. I am entering what must be the aforementioned man cave. 
There are some chairs, a small bar area, and... Oh, very interesting. An entire section of the wall is some sort of bizarre machine. It looks advanced. Oh, uh, and I may have found Frank. I'm seeing a bipedal humanoid, stocky build with short brown hair. He's wearing a wrinkled suit. Currently, the life form is curled up in the fetal position next to the machine, facing the wall. Uh, Frank? Is that you? Frank? <laughs> this wasn't in my fatherhood handbook. Yep, that's him. He doesn't look like he's doing too well. Who are you? What are you doing down here? What are you doing down here? Everyone in your family's waiting for you. My family? My family? You've got to be kidding me. Those people aren't my family. What on earth are you talking about? You're Frank, aren't you? Who's Frank? Who are any of us? Oh, all right, no need to get existential. Look, something is obviously going wrong in this house, and I'm trying to get to the bottom of it. For some reason, your family keeps going about their days like you're responding to them, even though you're not. It seems like your disappearing has messed with things. Messing with things? Are you joking? Things are already as messed up as they could possibly be! What do you mean? You know why everyone keeps on continuing without me, even when I'm not there? It's because I don't matter. None of us matter. All that matters is the script. Script? What script? I don't know exactly. All I know is that it's this machine's fault. Right, the machine. Guide, can you run a scan on this thing? Of course. Scanning. Frank, what exactly are you talking about? I don't know exactly. All I know is that I was just some guy living my best life in Nicefield. I was going to work, making friends within the community, meeting nice people, enjoying wacky hijinks accompanied by audience reactions. Then, one day, I was here with Francis and the kids, no matter how strange it felt, no matter how detached I felt from everything. I somehow inherently knew what I was supposed to do. And any time I slipped up, the audience would turn on me. Golly gee. And it has something to do with this machine? I think so. It's always been down here, but I never thought anything of it until a couple weeks ago when it started making funny noises. That must be the maintenance I'm supposed to do. Guide, what are your thoughts? It would appear that the device in question is malfunctioning due to a reality corruption. In order to fix the reality corruption, you will need to use your gauntlet uninterrupted for five minutes. Great! Wait a minute. What's the function of the machine? Uh, back up. Frank, did anything change when you noticed the machine acting differently? Yeah, that's when I was finally able to start thinking for myself again. The closer I got to the red noises, the easier it was to think for myself, so... I've just been hiding out down here. Seriously? You just up and abandoned your whole family? It's not like that, okay? And they're hardly my family. Knowing what I know now, I bet none of them want to be here either. Besides, I'm terrified to leave. If I go up there, I might fall back into whatever was controlling me before. Okay, uh, let me just walk through this. Years ago, something happened that completely took over your mind, mm -hmm. and as of a couple weeks ago, you were finally able to think for yourself again? Mm -hmm. It sounds like this machine I'm supposed to fix has been the thing controlling you. And the reality corruption is what's setting you free. Guide, I, I'm not so sure about this one. I mean, why is the machine here anyways? Did the creative place it? There are many machines present across many different realities. I mean, yeah, I know that, but this thing is weird. Do you have any idea where it might come from? I mean, did someone place it here? Uh-oh. It's happening again. Uh-oh? Uh-oh, what? Is your man cave more of a manhole? Tired of the smell of old beer and sorrow? Can't clean your room, but don't want your nagging wife to invade your personal space? Oh no, not these two again. We all know how sacred your man cave is, so let's keep it that way. Hi, I'm Randall Howard Cash III. And I'm Jan. Where do you even come from? Well, do we have the product for you. Introducing the Multipurpose Turbo Home Apparatus 3000. Golly gee. With the help of this nifty tool, you can say goodbye to your family and hello to peace and quiet. My husband spends so much time down there with that thing. Sometimes I wonder what else they get up to. <laughs> If you're looking for a product with specific attributes, well, we can't help you there. 
But if you're looking for a product that will solve all of your problems, look no further. How? Literally how? This product can do everything. Literally every single thing. All of them. At once. So much. Some may even say too much. So, what are you waiting for? Order, Order now. now. That means the commercial's ending and the scene's gonna change. Quick, grab onto the machine. It's gonna keep us anchored. Anchored? What do you- Whoa! No! Ugh, I just got transported back to the main room. It must have been because of that commercial break. How am I supposed to get back to the man cave from here? Oh no! Deborah is coming over in a couple minutes and we're not even close to having the casserole ready. Maybe we could just go buy some from, like, the supermarket or something? Deborah would definitely notice her and her discerning tastes and beautiful hair. Uh, I mean, her vicious eyes for the culinary arts. Looks like the reality corruption is getting worse, and the audience isn't happy about it. Oh dear, if I lose this competition, we're never going to be able to show our faces at a casserole competition ever again! Oh, what a shame. <laughs> Susie, you know that's the highlight of my year. Seems a bit depressing to me. What's so nice about it anyways, Mama? Papa never comes, and you just spend the whole day with that mean neighbor lady. She's not mean. She's independent. Why can't a woman just make a name for herself and not be insulted? <laughs> I mean, I just... I just love casserole! <laughs> They're so loud, Mama! Okay, this is getting out of hand. Oh no! It's Deborah. Knock knock, Francis. Are you ready to see whose casserole takes the cake? Uh, just one moment, Deborah. Oh, I don't know what to do. Papa, what do you think? Hold on. They mostly ignore me, sure, but they're waiting on Frank. <sighs> well, here goes nothing. <clears throat> it's like I always say, this wasn't in my fatherhood handbook. <laughs> Classic Frank! Um, nice! can't believe that actually worked. Maybe I can use this. Well, I hate to say it, but this is important to Mom, so it should be important to all of us. Let's win this casserole competition and show just how great our family is. Mama, you can get to work on the casserole, and Susie and I will distract the mean neighbor lady. Wait, and what's, what's Dad gonna do? Uh, think fast. What would the script say? Uh... This wasn't in my fatherhood handbook? Classic Frank. Frank! Is that all he ever says? Okay, Susie, you distract her and I'll set up a prank. That should give Mama enough time. You devious little ankle biter. You know, you're not such a bad brother. Aww. Oh, Miss Deborah, how are you doing today? Just fine, Susie, thank you. Where is your mother? Oh, um, she'll be right out. Wow, that's a beautiful dress, Miss Deborah. Where did you get it? I have something to say to your mother. It can't wait. Deborah's going off script. It looks like Susie and Johnny are frozen. I, they probably can't move until they hear Deborah's next line. Wow, that's a beautiful dress, Miss Deborah. Where did you get it? Susie, please, this is important. That's a beautiful dress, Miss Deborah. Where did you get it? That's a beautiful dress, Miss Deborah. Where did you get it? That Nowhere your family could afford, of course. Um, I assure you we can afford second-hand stores, Miss Deborah. Why, I never... Now show me to a seat so I can put down my casserole. What on earth? Who placed this whoopee cushion here? Hee <laughs> You'd think this was a chili cookout. <laughs> you insolent little child! Where is your mother? Oh, oh, she's just adding the final touches. Here, why don't you try this lovely sandwich for an appetizer? Oh, well, thank you very much. 
I'm pretty sure that sandwich is just two slices of bread with a whoopee cushion in the middle. Oh, heavens! This is absolutely ridiculous! Are you two trying to mock me? I'm so sorry, Miss Deborah. I have no idea how that could have happened. Here, take a drink of some ice-cold lemonade. It's, it's just a cup with a whoopee cushion in it. Gotcha again! What on earth? You two rascals! I bet your no-good father put you up to this. What do you have to say for yourself, Frank? <sighs> this wasn't in my fatherhood handbook. I swear, this family is an absolute nightmare. Where is your mother? Where is Francis? I mean, I need to see this casserole making for myself. If it's anything like the rest of this family, it's going to be a mess. I'm going to the kitchen. Uh oh, we better go after her. Wowza! Okay, I am never going to get used to that feeling. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we had another scene transition. We are standing in the kitchen again. Oh, we're so close to the man cave. Oh, maybe since I'm Frank now, I, I can go downstairs. Uh, golly gee, looks like characters can only move from room to room when the plot calls for it. Uh, what am I supposed to do? Francis, what's the meaning of all this? Your family has been nothing but disrespectful since I arrived. I'm... I'm... Deborah, I can't pretend to hate you. Francis? They're going off script. It looks like they're starting to break free. I don't want to fight you, Deborah. I... I think you're amazing. Really, you do it all. I... admire you. I wish I were you. No, it's not that I wish I were you. I... No, I... I should stop. I'm sorry. Wait, Francis, I feel the same way. Francis, what's the meaning of all this? Your family has been nothing but disrespectful since I arrived. What the devil was that? Deborah, please. I want to tell you... I don't hate you. I... I think I might... <laughs> Francis, what's the meaning of this? Your family has been nothing but disrespectful since I arrived. Deborah, I don't know what's happening. It's like my whole life I'd been staring at shadows on a wall of a cave and suddenly I, I'm i starting to look around. Francis, what's the meaning of this? Your family has been nothing but disrespectful since I arrived. We were friends before. What happened? I... I don't know who I am. I don't know where I am. This life isn't what I want. I want... I want... <laughs> Why is this happening? I'm scared. Mom, I'm scared. The reality's spiraling. I need to get down to the reality corruption and fast, but how do I get downstairs? I can't let myself through the door unless the plot calls for it. Oh. If I can't go to the scene, I'll have to bring the scene to me. <clears throat> I know what'll cheer you all up. A trip down to the man cave. Oh, thank goodness that worked. We only have so much time until the audience gets mad that we're off script again. What? What's going on? Oh, heavens. What happened back there? You guys! How, how, how'd you all get down here? Dad? Is this where you've been the whole time? Papa, I missed you! What's going on? Uh, kids, uh, Francis, is, is everyone all right? I, I'm sorry for running. I, I couldn't keep living a lie out there. There's no time to explain everything. Guys, if I fix the reality corruption, what happens? The reality will be restored. Restored to what? These people aren't themselves. It sounds like this device is completely controlling their lives. What are you talking about? And where is that voice coming from? Not now, Deborah. Guide, are you sure the reality corruption isn't being caused by the device? 
Many entities have been sent to perform maintenance on the device by fixing the reality corruption. And the reality corruption keeps coming back? <sighs> Guide, it seems like the reality corruption isn't the machine breaking, it's the machine itself. Maybe it's forcing this reality down a timeline it was never meant to end up in. The only way to stop the corruption once and for all is to get rid of the machine. Oh no, it's happening again. There's no way we can all stay anchored. Once the commercial ends, we're gonna get sent back to the main room and go back to the script. Hi, I'm Randall Howard Cash the Third, And I'm Jam. I don't want to go Ever back. Ever felt the cold hand of death gripping at your very soul? Ever wandered out into an open field and felt the entire planet hurling through space beneath your feet? Ever woken up just as the sun dawned and seen the eye of a lonely god peeking over the horizon? Oh, have I? You have. Well, do we have the product for you. Introducing the Multipurpose Turbo Home Apparatus 3000. Guide, can my gauntlet destroy the machine? You are not yet authorized to use your gauntlet's destructive capabilities. I swear, my husband spends more time with the Multipurpose Turbo Home Apparatus 3000 than he spends in confessional. And he weeps at the comprehension of his infinitesimal role in the universe just as much. These people clearly aren't meant to be following the script. We need to free them. I mean, if not for their sake, for the sake of the reality. My protocol will not allow me to do what you are asking. If you're looking for a product that will help you grapple with the ever-present ennui that greets you every night just before you fall asleep, while also helping you do your chores, this is the perfect product for you. How multi-purpose. So, what are you waiting for? Uh, the commercial's about to end. Fine, I'll do it myself. Just give me that turbo whatever thing. If my gauntlet won't let me destroy this machine, let's see if this will. Wow, it really is multi-purpose. Goodness gracious, what just happened? Mission complete, entity number B333. The reality corruption has been resolved. Your approach, while unorthodox, was successful. <sighs> Looks like the machine got destroyed. The script is gone, we're free! Gee whiz! How come they get to say gee whiz? <laughs> Wait, what does this mean for our family? Oh, honey, your father and I are always going to love you two no matter what, but I don't think we should be together anymore, Frank. <laughs> I don't even think we were ever married. We just sort of appeared in this house, so that's fine by me. I mean... Who would want to be married to dad anyways? <laughs> Deborah, I have a confession to make. What is it, Francis? I've been in love with you. For as long as I can remember your independence, your confidence, those polka dot dresses you wear. I've been in love with it all since the beginning, and God knows how long ago that was. I. I know you probably don't feel the same way, but- Francis, you shut that pretty little mouth of yours. All this time, I've just been trying to get your attention. I wanted to let you know how I really felt about you, but the script always wanted to pit me against you. I love you. And for what it's worth, I think your casserole has always been better than mine. Oh, Deborah, Kiss me! Aww. I still don't know what a casserole is, but that seems nice. And you know what, everybody? This, this wasn't, wasn't in my, my fatherhood, fatherhood handbook. handbook. <laughs> wow, that was terrible. Uh, okay, uh, there's music playing again and everyone's frozen, but they all look happy. I guess it's fixed. Hey, Guide, sorry for not listening to you. I was kind of freaking out back there for a second. You completed the mission, even if in an atypical manner. You do not need to apologize to me. Thanks, Guide. Now, let's shift back to the facility. Mission Log 3 is complete. Now that I'm finally back and can't get censored anymore, fuck, shit, ass! 
Anyways, that reality was a lot more terrifying than I'd bargained for, but I'm glad they got their happy ending. There was more difficulty reaching the reality corruption than last time, but with the guide's help, I was able to find where it was located. I ended up destroying the machine that the mission wanted me to fix, but hey, the reality corruption's gone now, hopefully for good. Although I can't help but wonder how that machine got there in the first place, and why no previous entities chose to destroy it. But it doesn't matter now. The reality corruption is fixed. So, where should I go next? Audio tape complete. Thank you for listening to Entity Number B333's Mission Log 3. You, creative, may decide where B333 goes next. Find the poll on our Twitter at Moirai Project and Instagram at the.moirai.project. This week's audience suggestion was to include a malfunctioning mind control device. This suggestion was from KD. Every episode, we include one audience suggestion, so keep sending us suggestions via the questionnaire. This episode was written by Jace Garner, Alana Stallings, and Catherine Williamson. The Guide is played by Alana Stallings. B is played by Catherine Williamson. Dean is played by Yusuf El Musalami. Goose is played by Jace Garner. Johnny is played by Emma Paulini. Susie is played by Alana Stallings. Francis is played by Regina Famatigan. Deborah is played by Grace Lyde. Randall Howard Cash III is played by Jace Garner. Jan is played by Emma Paulini. Frank is played by Yusuf El Musalami. <laughs>